This is my 1968 C10. After countless amounts of hours invested, I've taken this rust bucket and completely transformed it into a one of a kind super truck. The first massive undertaking I had to do was to design and build a custom chassis which turned out way better than I expected. And now with a chassis of this magnitude, I have to step up my game for the body of this truck. That's where carbon fiber comes in. Before we dive into the action, I've been seeing a comment on so many of my videos that I have to address it. And all these comments are always talking about my welding helmet. But today is the day where I finally listen to you guys and get myself a new welding helmet. Ever since I started my YouTube channel, you guys have watched me struggle welding with this exact welding mask, but one of the viewers of the channel actually turns out to be a company that deals with welding helmets, welders, and all sorts of good stuff, and they decided to help me out and send me a brand new welding helmet. This is Art Captain's Auto Darkening Welding Helmet and I really like the design of this helmet. It has a large window, so the visibility is excellent. And of course you need batteries to power up the sensors, but this is also a solar powered helmet, so that's a super cool feature. And the overall comfort level of this helmet is perfect. I'd have no problems wearing this for an extended amount of time, but our captain went 10 steps further and helped out the channel a lot more than just with this helmet. Let me show you why. This is the Art Captain TIG 200P welder. I am super excited to finally have a TIG welder in my shop. Believe it or not, I've never even tried TIG welding before and I've also never tried welding aluminum. So it's gonna be a steep learning curve to dive in with two kind of new elements I've never tried before. Once I get the hang of this thing, I'm gonna be able to do so many things for my C10 project. There's still a roll cage I need to do and there's a lot of aluminum welding that I can do now as well. So that's very exciting. And today I have a secret project that I haven't revealed to you guys yet. It will be in a future episode, but I need an aluminum fuel cell for that project. And we're gonna try to weld that up today. So I have a few practice plates. I need some practice before I can start welding some fuel cells. And if I can actually weld it and make it work, it's gonna be quite the testament to how good this welder actually is, as I have never even touched a machine like this before. So let's dive in. So before I start welding on my actual fuel cell, I'm gonna practice on some scrap pieces, get my settings down, and then I'll be ready to go. So I got a scrap piece tacked together. I'm gonna try and weld this up and see how it works. The great thing about this welder is that it comes with every single thing you need to start welding, except for the gas, of course, and it really blows my mind that you can just scoop one of these up for under a thousand bucks and weld anything you want really. So it's quite impressive. And with the TIG 200P, there's so many settings you can adjust to perfect your welds. And you can run the machine with 120 volts or 240 volts. And you can even stick weld with it too. It does come with the stick attachment.
So I just finished welding up the basic shape of my fuel cell. Now I just have to finish the top part and weld that in. But before I do that, I have to make baffles to reduce the fuel slosh inside the tank. But I'm gonna continue this progress in the video where I reveal this project. So if you've been debating on getting a TIG welder, definitely check out the Arc Captain TIG 200P. It's an awesome machine, works very well and they always have really good deals going on on their website and if you check out the link in the description and use code AGTRUCKS you can actually get an additional 5% off your purchase. I was so impressed with their TIG welder that I'm actually debating on replacing my older Miller with an Art Captain MIG welder. All right so getting back into the composite side of things we are going to continue our progress on the carbon fiber tailgate. Now in my last episode, you guys watched me struggle making a mold and I was able to salvage what I could. And once I clear coat my final carbon fiber part, I think I'll be able to sand out all the tiny little imperfections here and there. So before I can post cure my tailgate mold, I have to finish up a couple things on my composite oven and then we have to test it out. I don't even know if it works yet, so that could be quite interesting, but we got lots of stuff to do, so let's get at it. In a previous episode, you guys had watched me build a custom composite curing oven from scratch and it was a very intricate build. It took me quite a while to make, but the end result is pretty wicked. So since the episode that I made this oven, I have made a few modifications. And the first one is this insulated box on the side and I put some rock wool insulation behind there and that's simply to um, keep all the heat in from the elements since they're recessed in the wall and as you can see I've also made some baffles so that the radiant heat from the elements don't heat up a certain spot on my panels more quickly and walking into the oven the other thing I did was come up with a system for my temperature sensors that I think is going to work very well so typically most people just hook up the sensors to a permanent location so it's hard mounted on the wall somewhere but what I did is I just installed a hook and I let the leads of the temperature sensors dangle that way I'll be able to set them exactly where the part is and I think that's going to give me the most accurate temperature readings So yesterday I was able to test out my oven and it worked flawlessly. I'm super impressed. It went up in temperature, it maintained it, and the outside of the oven was cool to the touch so it means that it's well insulated. So now the only thing left to do is post cure some parts. So I just started the post cure for the mold. It's currently cooking so it's pretty exciting. So looking through the oven window here, I am now halfway through the post cure of the mold. Everything is looking really good and I've just been monitoring the heat with my thermal imaging camera so everything looks really good. We're just at 150 degrees Fahrenheit right now and soon enough I'm going to ramp it up to 200 for another hour and then finally to 250. One thing that post curing definitely does is it finds any air pockets or voids when you made the mold and it brings it out in the final product. So there's quite a few spots where I had to pop a little air pocket and fix it up, sanded it down and then I polished the whole thing. So it was quite a bit of extra work but it needed to get done and I've already done so much work on this mold so what's an extra few hours of work? and hopefully on my next few molds, um, I don't have this issue. So the very first step I need to do now that the mold is ready is start off by applying some gum tape 
on the entire perimeter of the mold. And what that's gonna allow me to do is stick on a vacuum bag once everything is laid up, but we'll get to that later on. And the reason I'm applying the gum tape first is simply because if I do that after I've applied some release agent, the gum tape isn't gonna stick properly. So the very first step is always applying the gum tape and then you minimize the chance of having a leak when you apply some vacuum pressure. died before I actually got the last coat on but that was all four coats of the mold sealer so now that that has cured I'm gonna apply the 700 NC and then it's another four coats of that and hopefully this works better than on my plugs or in this case the tailgate because last video we were having some pretty big struggles I'm feeling a lot more confident because this release agent is specifically made for epoxy tooling and that's exactly what I have The mold is ready to go and I roughly measured and cut some fabric. So we're gonna start applying some fabric and I'll be using some 3M spray tack just to hold the fabric in the corners and to make sure everything stays nice and uniform. So after playing around with the first layer of carbon on my tailgate mold, I've run into my very first snag. So I want to make sure that the uh, weave of my carbon fiber is perfectly straight down the length of the tailgate and with the hump being in the middle of the tailgate, I can get one side straight but then it just distorts the other side when I pull on it and straighten it out. So it's one side or the other that's going to be straight or crooked and the only way to fix that is if I cut out a section for the middle hump and then make a seam somewhere and that's what I'm going to do because I just can't stand having a distorted weave on either the top side or the bottom side of the tailgate. To make a seam with carbon fiber it isn't as easy as just cutting the fabric and overlapping the next layer. You're going to have the edges fray just like this so you'll never get a clean seam doing just that. To eliminate the edges from fraying when I make my cut or my seam, what I need to do is I need to get some carbon fiber veil and then I can spray tack it in place wherever I wanna make my cut and then that keeps all the fibers from fraying and it makes a nice clean cut. So the problem isn't that I can't make a seam, the problem is that I don't have a carbon fiber veil here. So I can't do anything until I get that carbon fiber veil and I got some on order, but right now I can't do anything else. So that halts the production of the carbon fiber tailgate, but there's still lots of work to do with uh, my mold making. I'm gonna make the quarter panels and the headboard so that will be um, all the molds for the box, but I'm gonna keep working on this in the next episode because um, it's gonna be a few days till I get this carbon fiber veil and I'm also waiting on some PVA and wax to make my molds. I've seen all the comments from all you guys on my last video where I couldn't release my mold off of my part or my tailgate and um, a lot of you guys recommended PVA and wax and that's exactly what I'm gonna try. So a huge thank you to Arc Captain for sending me their TIG welder. I've had a blast using it, it works awesome. 
I highly recommend it. Check out the link in my description if you want to pick one up for yourself and get the 5% uh, off discount code AG Trucks. And I also want to thank you guys for all the feedback um, in the comments of my last video where I've had some issues making the molds. Um, I did read all the comments and I'm going to be taking all your suggestions and applying them in my next video where I continue making some more molds and making my carbon fiber tailgate. So with that being said, thank you all for watching and I will see you in the next one.